This is the Domain Magnet Show, where you'll learn everything you need to know about buying, optimizing, and selling online businesses with your host, Michael Baroslavsky. Hello, podcast listener. This episode features a talk and uh, a panel discussion, which I had last month in Los Angeles at the Invest Like a Boss Summit. This was an event for investors and we were discussing the different opportunities for investors available in the online business market and why it's potentially a very good, very lucrative opportunity. At the beginning of this episode, I discussed a little bit about how this works, about the market, about the main magnet, how we operate our strategy and then we also have a panel discussion and some questions from the audience. This episode features some very basic questions but it also has a few more detailed and more advanced concepts. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, they would do kind of a short introduction of themselves and kind of the, like what, what they do, and then they're actually going to do a panel. So this one's going to be even more Q&A based. So while they're introducing themselves, really start thinking about uh, what you want to ask them. So uh, now we have Michael, and we have Stacey coming up. firm. We buy online businesses up to one million dollars and we've been doing it for about 15 years now with hundreds of deals and uh, we focus uh, on mostly content businesses so it's content sites, blogs, affiliate sites. We don't really do e-commerce and other things and having that narrow focus really helps us develop the advantages. Uh, so let me tell a little bit about us. This is some of our team members and we also have a couple dozen more people we work with on a freelancer basis as contractors and half our team are involved in managing the deal flow. We look at hundreds of different deals, mostly private deals, review them, analyze, and the other half are involved in managing the businesses that we buy and run. And uh, first of all, a little bit about me. You're welcome to check out my personal website. So I've, I've lived in four countries. I've traveled to like 60 countries. I speak four languages. And this is actually my first time in the US. Loving it so far. And uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, so we have a podcast, we recently started. You're welcome to check it out. On the last episode we had uh, Matt Berry, uh, the owner of freelancer.com and escort.com. And now finally the good stuff. So how does it work? How do we figure out what kind of businesses to buy and which don't buy? And we have our deal assessment framework that we've developed over the years. So when we look at any business, any deal, we look at it through, through different criteria. First we look at the numbers. And this is normal, this is what everyone does. We look at the price, the, uh, the revenues, the profits, the price of the profit multiple, we look at the trends, and all those normal things. And of course, some proofs and revenue proofs. But for most buyers, unfortunately, that's where their due diligence stops. For us, it's just the beginning. Because next, we would look at risks, and the risks are really the most important part of, of the equation because when you buy an online business you could often acquire a business for just two or three years worth of profits 
So it's not that difficult to make profits. It's not that difficult to find profits compared to any traditional investment. So why do so many people lose money on that? Just because they misevaluate the risks. And so that is the most important part of the equation. And then we look at the opportunities. And uh, uh, we have many advantages that we've developed in, in this field that allow us to, to, to get much better deals than what most people would. So most of our deal flow comes from people coming to us. And while in general, if you have a business under one million, like in six figures you want to sell, it would take on average about five months. If you go with a broker, if you list it, list it on the marketplace, and we are usually able to do a deal like that in six figures in just one week. So we are able to go to our sellers and offer, offer them a price quickly, and that's why we generally get a major discount from market price. Also because if they go to a broker, they would pay a 15% commission and we buy directly. So that's why we are usually able to get a substantial discount from market value. And we have our network of SEO people, content people, so we are able to manage and grow those businesses efficiently. And our strategy is more short term. And that's usually surprising to most people because the idea is you buy a business, you grow it for like five, 10 years, you can exit and then you look for an exit. And what we do is the exact opposite. We buy a business, we try to get it cheap, we buy low, we improve some things that we can improve quickly, and then we sell and we try to sell high. And what we found is that this is just a more optimal strategy based on the current market and based on our own strengths and our team strengths. And that also helps us manage risks better. So when we have many different deals and we don't hold on to things for too long, we just buy, improve and sell, we are able to reduce our risks substantially in our portfolio. We've had consistent returns of 100% for many of the deals that we do. And uh, we've been doing it for 15 years, but we've actually only started taking on some investors last year when we started our first fund. And now we also start offering some services to people that want to go and buy businesses. And we offer a full service so we help people understand what kind of deals they should be looking for, find the right deals, um, help them do the due diligence, acquire the business, and we also manage the business. Uh, so that's a little bit about us. And you're welcome to go visit our website to find out more. Thanks. All right, cool. So um, what was really nice about having uh, Michael and the reason why we wanted to have Ace here is they're kind of on the, the buying side of buying businesses. So whether, you know, it might not be a big startup uh, or like something growing like a good death, but buying a business that is actually already, already selling well. So let's say liquid death was on Amazon for whatever reason and it was making $10,000 a month someone might be wanting to exit that business for whatever reason and now you can go in and you can actually buy these businesses usually for you know whatever it is it might be a three times annual revenue uh, revenue or something like that and this is a way where us as investors can own a business without building it ourselves and it's it's not correlated to the stock market or real estate so this is something that a lot of people uh, are getting kind of more and more interested in because this is a way where you don't just make maybe a 7% return or a 12% return, but you can literally make a 100x return or a 1,000% return, or you can lose everything. Um, so uh, now there are companies like Michael's that actually take on investors as well. So instead of them buying the whole deal themselves, uh, they actually have people come in and say, you know, we'll put in 75% or something. And uh, Ace's company, Income Acquisitions, does the same thing. I think uh, his Ace's deals start at 100,000, while Michael's deals start at, it's like, huh? Similar. Around, around the same, okay. Um, and then I think some of Ace's deals go up much higher as well. And then what, the reason why we wanted to have Stacy on uh, is she was buying businesses kind of on, on her own for herself 
as a way of bringing in new streams of income. And this is kind of more where a lot of us are going to be right now, especially we're getting started. So uh, Stacey, can you just introduce yourself? Yeah, so hi, my name is Stacey Caprio. And I, so I currently own a company and website called Her CEO, where I do document entrepreneur journeys, getting financial independence, especially people who have bought and sold websites. So I started on my journey of buying websites as a way to get financial independence. So website investments are very unique in the sense that you put down the capital. Once you make it all back, because you get monthly payments if you chose a good website, <laughs> then each month after that, it becomes pure profit. So it's not like the stock market graphs that we saw earlier in some people's talks where you put money in and it can go up and down at any time, but once you make your initial capital back, it's pretty much pure profit. So you, it's not like they can take that away from you once you've made it. So it's more similar to real estate in that sense. So it's a great vehicle for people who want to get financially independent or start getting some type of income on the side that is not dependent on the stock market or any type of fluctuation. So websites are great because you can buy them for such a lower valuation than real estate. So real estate, it might take you five or six years to make your money back, but websites, um, you can actually make your money back in 10 months or two years, depending on what type of site you buy and how good you are at growing it and improving the revenue. Uh, so that's pretty much the upside. However, as Michael was saying, there is a lot of risk. So <laughs> the first two sites that I actually bought, I pretty much lost the money I put into it because I didn't really know what I was doing. So for example, you really have to verify revenue the first site I bought, the owner, the seller was pretty much just lying about how much it was making. So I thought, oh, this is a great deal. I'm gonna earn it back in three months. And obviously no one would sell a site um, for three months of profit. Like if it's making that much, you're gonna pretty much pay 20 times monthly profit, anywhere up to 60 times, depending on what broker you get it from. Um, and depending on, so if you partner with a company, so you can buy sites independently or you can buy it through a company that will manage it for you, kind of like Michaels or Aces. So you have to choose which makes sense for you based on your technical ability and just your time, the time that you have. And um, you can do research to figure out what makes sense for you. But if you do partner with a company, understand that you might be making it back in a longer time period. Um, so you just have to figure out what makes sense for you there. But I think the main thing to think about when investing in a site, start smaller so you can make mistakes with a small amount of money. And then as you get experience and you kind of learn what to look for in a good site and you learn how to grow it and maximize revenue, you can start investing more money. So it's the type of thing, either start with someone who knows what they're doing or <laughs> start small because I definitely made some mistakes, but once you get the hang of it, it's a really great tool to make monthly recurring revenue and it's what's allowed me to be financially independent. So I'm definitely grateful for that. So I can, yeah, if you have questions about red flags or green flags or that type of thing, I suppose I can answer them from an investor's perspective as well. Nice. Uh, thank you for that introduction. That's good. And actually, it's uh, kind of fitting that I'm the third person on here because I represent kind of the seller's point. I've sold a couple of these you know, small, medium-sized businesses. Uh, I, I, the, the two examples I want to give, I would, I would say the second one was a dropshipping store that I had that was, you know, it was doing okay. It wasn't, I wasn't cutting it or anything. It was, the, the average profit per month was $1,500. Uh, to about to two thousand dollars in net profit. Some months were better, some months were worse. And the person who bought it, the reason why uh, they bought it, well, the reason why I was selling it, because that might be a question, is why would someone sell a business if it's making money? For me, it was because I had started that business with my girlfriend at the time, and when we split, we were still running it. And you can imagine it gets a bit messy. And luckily, we actually had a very you know amicable breakup. We were still friends, but I felt that. You know, having the business was kind of like 
keeping us from moving on completely because we would still have to talk every week and it almost felt, felt like a bit of an excuse for her to call me or like or talk to me every single day pretty much about something and it was really hard for me to move on. Uh, so that's, well, that's why I was like, I need to sell this business. Uh, the guy that bought the business, the reason why he bought it was he was in the process of building his own dropshipping store and he was in the same course as, uh, the course that I took, so he's following kind of the same method. But he was struggling. He was making some sales here and there, but he didn't really know what he was doing. He didn't really know how to launch it. It was his first time. So his idea was if he buys this store from someone who's already done it, he can kind of see the back end and backward engineer it and figure out, okay, like I can see how it works. This is how it's supposed to be built. Maybe that'll help me with my, my next business. Uh, and then the other example quickly was uh, I sold the store because when I built it, in 2013, I stupidly didn't use a mobile responsive theme, thinking no one's gonna buy anything online with a with a phone. And two, three years later, half of the, I was losing half my sales because I was getting so much mobile traffic, but I wasn't set up to display correctly on a phone. And I was like, well, I even have to spend a lot of time, energy, and money converting the whole website to be mobile friendly, or I can just get rid of this and do something else. The guy who bought it, the reason why he bought it, he saw this as an opportunity thinking, oh, look at this lazy idiot who <laughs> doesn't even have it mobile optimized. I can buy this and then I can just have my, my team build up the, the store, redo the theme to be mobile friendly. It's gonna double the value of it, which means I have double the profits coming in every month and if I wanna sell it again, I can flip it for double what I bought it for. So there's, there's win-wins and reasons for, for every single person. And uh, as Stacey and Michael mentioned, from the, from the buyer's point of view, that's kind of these value adds that they're thinking about. Like, can, can you kind of go into a little bit deeper on what are some of the other ways you can buy a business and increase the value of it? Oh, yes, that's a great question. And yeah, so the person buying Johnny's site obviously was kind of thinking ahead, like, oh, how can I double revenue quickly? So if he sold it at like a 40 times monthly profit valuation, he would get it he'd make his money back in 20 months. So that's kind of what you want to look for, like an undervalued site or something the owner's not seeing that you kind of see. So something, uh, just a few things that I kind of look for across sites is um, if a site is super slow, that's just an opportunity that you can improve off the bat and you'll see a lot more traffic users staying on the site longer in sales. So that's like a huge like thing to look for that you can improve on. Secondly, Look at the app, like if it's making revenue on ads, which a lot of sites that I have are. Um, it helps to have relationships with different ad platforms. So you can test different ones to see what will make you the most money. And you can also put more ads on the site and put them in prime positions. So you can use a tool such as Zoic, which is an ad testing plugin that helps you find the positions that, that return the most revenue to help you do that. And then the third thing is, if it makes money in other ways, you can look at ways you can test to improve the conversion rate or maybe add different monetization methods. So there are just a few quick things you can do off the bat to really increase the revenue. Because the goal, if you buy a site at 20 times monthly revenue, like you want to make it back in 10 months so you can start making the profit. So I think that's the, the goal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's, that, that was a great explanation. And the reason why it's so powerful to increase the profits isn't just for that monthly profit. So if you, let's say you bought a, a, a site for $100,000, right? It could, be, it could be less, it could be more, whatever it is. Let's say it was $100,000. The way that they got to that number is a multiple of the monthly profit or the revenue or whatever it was. So maybe it was making 2,500 a month or something, and, you know, you know uh, for x annual uh, uh, multiple. If you can increase the profit margin, the profit from 2,500 to 5,000, which you could do in kind of the ways we just explained, you could double your traffic through adding ads, you can make your site mobile responsive, so now you have this whole new market, maybe you introduce more products, maybe you do the site, maybe you know, you add more products, whatever it is. If you can double your monthly profit, you're not making an extra 2,500 a month. You're now, you now own a business that is worth twice as much as you bought it for. 
So yes, you're making an extra 2,500 a month, you're making five grand a month now, but if you, did, if you sold that business a year from now, you don't just get back your 100 grand, and you don't just get back the 200 grand that you can now sell it for, you get back 200 grand plus $5,000 that you made per month that entire time. So now your $100,000 investment in one single year has now made 200,000 plus 5,000 times 12, what is that? Two, <laughs> yeah, $260,000. So now you've more than doubled your investment in one year, and that's what makes it so powerful. So to add a little bit more, I want to ask you a question first of all, how many people here bought a website before, or looked into buying a website before? Okay, so just a few. So to take a step back from that, before you, one of the, one of the most common questions we get is, how do, I, how do I start? There are so many different businesses I can buy. How do I choose? Where do I look? What do I do? So what we usually recommend is, first of all, define a few things, a few criteria. First of all, ask yourself, what is my budget? And just like Stacy mentioned earlier, it pays better, like it's better not to put all your budget in, in one business the first time you buy a business. But uh, you can figure out, let's say your budget is 100,000, so maybe you would go and take 10% of that, 20% of that, buy some business. Once you feel more comfortable that you know how to manage it, how to run it, go and buy a bigger business. So once you've figured out your budget, your overall budget, your budget for the first time deal, and the next question you want to ask yourself is, um, what am I good at? <laughs> what are my advantages? And if you buy a business that you have some advantages in running, your success rate is just going to be higher. So it could be anything. It doesn't have to be something technical. So let's say you work in logistics and you are really good at organizing things. So you might want to look into businesses that are really complicated, like a dropshipping business <laughs> or an e-commerce business. If you are good at, like let's say you are uh, a fan of cars and you have a lot of interest in different cars, so you can go and look up websites for sale related to cars. Uh, so having it aligned with your interests or with your competences and skills is going to increase your success rate substantially. And then the third thing is you have to figure out you know, the strategy of how you're going to buy it, where you're going to find it. And before you, uh, before you buy it, you have to know how to actually manage it, so you would either work with, with someone like us, or you would go and hire someone like a VA to help you manage your site, or you would just go and learn all the skills on your own, and then uh, start looking at deals. And what most people do is they start looking at deals first. So it's kind of the other way around, and that's not good. So my, my first advice is really to, to ask yourself some of these questions before you start looking at deals, and then you get a better idea of what to look for, and then you can kind of go on and start buying something. Uh, so, so I have a question for you, is when someone invests with your company, are they running the website or are you running the website? And just, are they just like a passive investor where they just get some money? Do they have any say? Do they have any responsibilities? Uh, or do you guys kind of do everything and take a bigger cut? So that's a good question. So we, we do a bit of both. Uh, generally, our goal is to try to educate the buyer, the investor in, in our business. Actually, one of the criteria for investors is that they have to understand how businesses work, they have to understand how they operate, and it actually turned out quite a few investors who didn't match that. So we just, we just sold one of our businesses a couple of days ago, and the buyer um, he had some experience in running similar businesses, but he felt that he needed a lot of help with that. So the deal was that we would provide a lot of services for management. So it's kind of a hybrid deal. So we are going to help them run it for about six months. And we are also going to have our stuff available to educate them, to give them all the tools and all the contacts that they need. And the idea is that after that, they'll be able to take over and acquire the skills and experience to run it on themselves. Nice. And so, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to raise your hands at any time. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll just keep, keep flowing some out. Go ahead. What is your uh, fees if you are buying or selling the businesses? So the question is, how do you guys get paid? What are your fees or what do you charge? So uh, we don't really do much brokering. 
So in terms of, we get a lot of people coming to us with, with we want us to sell their website. Uh, we don't do a lot of that. In terms of uh, buying, it, it really depends on, on the specific needs. So for, I can tell you the model we have for investors, first of all. Uh, right now in our fund, the way it works is for every deal we do, we put up 10% of the, of the cost and the investors put up 90% of the cost and we manage everything, it's a completely passive investment and then we split the profits 50-50. Uh, so that, and that model also gives investors preference for returns, so the profits are only, we only get profits after they get their, their investment back. Uh, and in terms of fees, it really depends on a case-by-case -case study, so we, since we've only started doing offering these services this year because frankly like when you're good at buying businesses it's just so much more profitable it doesn't even make sense to think about like doing it for other people and the reason we started doing it is just to you know to help us expand so that allows us to be able to, to grow faster so it's really more um, it kind of really depends on each case and another thing is because when people come to us and they want us to find a deal for them, the deals we, we find are generally going to be very different from what you would see on the market. On average, we get somewhere between 20 and, and 30 or 40 percent discount just from the market value for each business we buy. So that would already give you enough of an edge to cover like, most of the fees. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Uh, how are you financing? Yeah, so for, for the first like 14 years of our operation, it's been all just our own money, our own funds. And now since we've started doing it with investors, it's all done from equity. We don't do any debt right now. One of the reasons is because we want to be very efficient and it's difficult to do if you, if you want to do an SBA loan, it's going to take a long time. We cannot do a deal in two days. And uh, another reason is kind of doing it for equity makes it simple and it allows the investors to be more like partners where they participate in the returns and uh, the losses. And Stacey, have you been funding it with your own cash or are you using your own loans, like SBA loan or your credit card loans to these businesses? I like to do it with cash um, for, not for reasons of speed, but just as I'd rather take on the risk with my own cash than um, debt because then it would take longer to pay it back and you'd have to probably get a nine to five or something. Domain Magnet is a leader in buying and selling online businesses with a proven track record of expertise gained from over 300 deals since 2004. To learn more about how we can help you acquire or exit a profitable online business today, head over to DomainMagnet.com for more details.